Hello chaps, how are you? Welcome once again to John Robson Guitar Tuition. As always, I do hope you're well. Uh, this guitar is a Squire Vintage Modified, I think, um, Strat. It's basically a Squire HSS Strat and Duncan Design pickups, and it's a really nice guitar. And it's going to be uh, the subject of a three-way shootout that's coming very soon. Uh, the other two guitars that will be in that video are the Harley Benton ST57DG, the black Gilmore-esque Strat, which has recently acquired uh, a Hot Rails pickup in the bridge position. And the third one that will be in that video is a, I think it's a Fender Highway 1 Strat, basically a Mexican HSS Strat. So we'll be comparing the bottom rung of the ladder, you know, the lowly Harley Benton with a, a cheap ebay hot rails pickup slammed into it uh, with the next rung up the ladder this is the squire and then the full fat fender and we'll just see how they compare to each other it should be interesting uh, i'm currently in the process of doing that video but i'm still waiting for the uh, fender to turn up so as soon as that's here i can crack on with that meanwhile i've been elbow deep in putting a new course together um, you may have heard me talk about one of my most successful Udemy courses. It's called Play Lead Guitar the Easy Way. And uh, so successful is it that uh, the good people at Fret Zealot are uh, including the course content in their uh, app. Uh, that'll be ready, I think, next month sometime, so I'm told. And if you're interested in getting a Fret Zealot, uh, use the discount code Fret, uh, John Robson 20 You can see it on screen there when you purchase um, a Fret Zealot system from fretzealot.com. Link in the description. Uh, so today's offering is basically um, a bit of a sneak pre preview of this new course which is designed to follow on from uh, Play Lead Guitar the Easy Way. It's sort of the next step of developing your pentatonic knowledge basically and one of the subjects that is covered in that course is blues and I'm going to show you the blues section of the course today which also includes a handy little exercise for improving your knowledge of the pentatonic patterns on the neck so without further ado here's the uh, blue section of this new course That has to be one of the most distinctive and recognisable sounds in all of popular music. The wailing electric blues guitar solo. And I'm going to show you how to do it. Uh, needless to say, the tab for the solo that I just played there, along with the jam track that I was playing over, are both available in the resources tab for this lecture. Uh, so go ahead and learn some licks and try them out. But let's have a look and see exactly what I was doing there in terms of the scale that was being used. Now, the chord sequence used uh, the chords of A7, D7 and E7. And all three of those chords are essentially major chords. Okay, an A7 is an A major chord with an extra note added in. D7 is a D major chord with an extra note added in, and so on. Okay, so that chord sequence was essentially based around A, D, and E major chords. The tonality, the chord that everything was kind of heading back towards, the musical center of gravity, if you like, was the A major chord. So now we know that the uh, tonality is A major. Conventional wisdom would have it that we would use the A major pentatonic, located as we've discussed in the previous uh, lecture and you're good to go. You now know where A major pentatonic is. But that's not what I did, okay? In order for it to sound bluesy, 
what you need to do is introduce some tension, some wrong notes, basically. And the best way of doing that is instead of using an A major pentatonic over an A major chord sequence, use an A minor pentatonic over the A major chord sequence. And there's just enough uh, tension and, let's face it, wrong notes in the A minor pentatonic scale when played over an A major tonality that it will sound bluesy and it'll have that inherent uh, bluesy kind of angst that you can exploit. It's worth noting that this is just a one-way street, by the way. You can't have something that was in A minor and use A major pentatonic over the top of that. That's just going to sound plain wrong, I'm afraid. So, you know, try it if you want to, but I promise you, you will not like the results. Anyway, let's have a look at that solo that I played once again. And this time, on screen, you'll see the different patterns of A minor pentatonic that I'm moving through. Here it is. Now that basic trick of using the minor pentatonic in place of the major pentatonic is one that underpins countless guitar solos in this genre over countless decades. Um, going back to a, a blues album that I think we're probably all familiar with, the uh, famous John Mayle and the Blues Breakers with Eric Clapton, the Beano album. Most of Eric's playing on that album is just pure minor pentatonic over major tonality bluesy kind of uh, sound. But by the time he'd um, moved on from the Blues Breakers and was playing with uh, Jack Bruce and Ginger Baker in Cream, his playing had developed a little bit more. What he was doing this time, okay, think of, for instance, a solo like Crossroads, the, uh, the famous live version, uh, that he did with Cream. What he was doing in that solo was using the A minor pentatonic over the A major tonality as a basic kind of platform uh, scale. But as each chord arrived, when the A major chord arrived, he would use the A major pentatonic mixed in with the A minor pentatonic. When the D chord arrived, he would play the D major pentatonic mixed in with the A minor pentatonic. When the E chord arrived, he would play the E major pentatonic mixed in with the A minor pentatonic. So you got A minor pentatonic bubbling away as an undercurrent underneath it all, providing that uh, inherent bluesy tension. But he was also playing in and out of the chord changes with the major pentatonic of each of the three major chords uh, in, the, uh, in, the, in the chord sequence. Uh, you can do that yourself. Well... You can hear me doing that and, uh, you know, see it being done in this solo here. And you could see the scale patterns on screen of the various different pentatonic scales that I was using uh, 
throughout that solo like i said i was i was kind of melding together a minor pentatonic with a major pentatonic a minor pentatonic with d major pentatonic and a minor pentatonic with e major pentatonic as the a d and e chords uh, progressed needless to say you need to be pretty good at instantly being able to find where any uh, pentatonic scale is any any the, the nearest version of uh, whichever pentatonic scale you need where is that on the uh, neck in the neighborhood that you're in at any given time and the way that i do this is well if we look for instance at a minor pentatonic there are the uh, the scale positions there and the frets that they're at so pattern one is at the fifth fret pattern two is at the eighth pattern three is at the tenth pattern four is at the twelfth and pattern five is at the fifteenth and of course it's down at the third fret and pattern one is at the seventeenth fret you can uh, map out the a minor pentatonic like that um, hopefully quite easily by now well let's look at that uh, in terms of just any pentatonic scale so pattern one is at fret n okay so pattern one of whichever pentatonic scale you need we can locate that as we've discussed in the previous lecture just by using that finger to find it okay or that finger if you're looking for a major pentatonic um, then you find that pattern two is three frets above where pattern one begins Pattern 3 is 5 frets above where pattern 1 begins. Pattern 4 is 7 frets above where pattern 1 begins, or 5 frets below. And pattern 5 is 10 frets above where pattern 1 begins, or 2 frets below. So what you do is you mentally, as you're playing, you look at the neck of the guitar, and you visualise where pattern 1 of the pentatonic scale that you need happens to be. And then you just mentally extrapolate up the neck until you've got the pattern that's nearest to where your fingers actually are at any given moment now this is obviously going to take some practice and here is an exercise that i use to do this all the time okay this is one of my warm-up routines every day um so you know i still find it useful what you do is you choose a fret number at random and then you play through all 12 major minor pentatonic scales okay uh, going around the cycle of fourths as you can see here on screen if you're not sure what the cycle of fourths is then um, I'm going to be doing a, another course on theory at some point so you might want to check that out but basically going around uh, that cycle there going from A minor to D minor to, e, to G minor to C minor and so on and so on until you get to E minor and then back to A minor again what you do is you pick a fret number at random and you play all of those pentatonic scales without moving more than one fret away from your chosen starting point uh, and you will find that you can do this if you can locate each of the five patterns um, correctly and as I say just do that little kind of mental extrapolation thing up the neck um, that I mentioned earlier here's me doing exactly that Okay then, let's generate a random number somewhere between the 1st and, I guess we'll say the 17th fret. Here we go. Right, so I'm going to do all of my uh, pentatonic scale positions at the 14th fret. <laughs> Thank you. 
So there you go. That's a handy little daily exercise that you can run through. And it's really going to sharpen up your uh, pentatonic scale location knowledge and knowing where all of the five patterns are in every key. Or tonality, I should say. Um, there are other methods of locating the pentatonic scales that we are going to look at uh, later on in the course. So if that one felt a bit heavy duty, then don't worry. There are more ways into this than just that way that I've mentioned there. But that was the way that I first learned it. So that's the way that um, I've first shown it to you guys. Anyway, you've got some uh, hopefully good blues ideas to be getting on with there and uh, some, um, you know, useful pentatonic skills that you can be working on, finding where the different uh, skills are along the length of the neck. Next up, what we're going to be doing is uh, looking at how you can connect the five different patterns uh, laterally along the neck. That's what's coming next. I'll see you then. So there you have it. And if you want uh, the tabs for uh, the solos that were in that video there, then I'm afraid you're just going to have to wait for the course to go live. It shouldn't be long. Now, I've just got a few more bits and pieces to transcribe and, and uh, just a few little kind of balls to tie on it, basically, and it will be ready and live on Udemy. Uh, speaking of Udemy, uh, the rest of the course is up there at the moment. There's, as you know, Play Lead Guitar the Easy Way. There's Making the Modes Easy. There's the Complete Beginner's Guide to Playing the Guitar for people who've never touched a guitar in, in their lives before. And there's uh, Blues Guitar Beyond the Pentatonic, which, as the name suggests, is aimed at people who are blues players who are just a bit bored with the same old pentatonic boxes and want to branch out into something a little bit more sophisticated, maybe the kind of Robin Ford type uh, style of blues that um, you know takes a little bit more than just pentatonic skills to be able to execute. So all of those are upon Udemy, big discounts on them uh, on all of those courses and details coming shortly on how you can order them. And with that, I'll say thank you very much for watching. Thank you for your time. I do hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, the jam track that I used in that clip is available in the description box so grab a copy of that and i look forward to seeing you all again next time bye for now folks and don't forget before you go to check out my udemy courses which you can see are available via my website which is also where you can contact me to get in touch for some one-to-one -one tuition either via skype or in person if you live local to me i also have merchandise available on my teespring store and of course all of the links are in the description see you next time chaps <laughs>